exploding the financial uh, results. So I say he is in, uh, doing the uh, investments. Uh, he is uh, classifying the investments in uh, amortized cost, but he wants to change it to a fair value model. So in the I-39, they were tainting rules. So when you change your intention or ability to hold is uh, uh, compromised, then they're tainting rules, which was penalty uh, for that entity who was changing its intention. In IS, uh, IFRS 9, we don't see anything like that. Don't you think that this will distort the, uh, the financial state within comparable entities? Actually, the problem is accounting standards do n should not prescribe any penalties. You know, there is something very, very uh, amazing about IS 39, the, the tainting rule uh, that if you have done it, you will have to bear this consequence. So accounting standards only should prescribe how economic substance should be reflected in the financial statements. In any case, you know, this tainting rule is held because there is no requirement that to, and there is no instrument by instrument decision that whether you want to carry that instrument till the end or not. It is depending on how the entity operates its business, how the company looks at its business, and how the portfolio, what is the objective of the portfolio and what is the objective of the business. Now, your, the objectives of your business do not change very frequently. It takes years for a business to change its objective. And at the same time, the objective of a business very is, is, is can, are very apparent, easy to verify. Whereas, in case of intention, you know, uh, it becomes very, very judgmental sometimes that uh, what was your intention previously and why it is changing to a different uh, intention and whether it was motivated by some profit management uh, objective or not. So in order to remove this subjectivity, which is presently available, that if you change your intention, you can, in certain circumstances, reclassify the instrument. Now, it is based on a business model, which is not subject to your intention, but is, which, it's a matter of fact, which is, a, which is a way of operating your business, which is very apparent from the way your business is and therefore it is it cannot be changed very easily and therefore it will add more uh, uh, I think stability and more I think uh, <clears throat> it, 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 will, it, it will have a more credibility to your classification than compared to the uh, present requirement which is based merely on the intentions sometimes. So Good evening, everyone. My name is Jackson Wilson. I'm from Famco Associates. My question is this, that in case of unquoted equity instruments, uh, those has to be measured at fair value. But if the cost of uh, computing its fair value exceeds its fair value, <laughs> right? The difference between like 100 is the cost and you are going to measure it on uh, measure its fair value and its fair value is 101. And the cost of computing that fair value in case of small companies where they don't have enough uh, expertise, they uh, hire some consultant and that cost comes to two, two rupees and the overall differential it's becomes the uh, one rupee, the differential is a negative one. So how, what uh, IFRS 9 says about that if in that case your cost exceeds your benefits? Actually, you know, materiality concept is behind every standard. So <clears throat> if the overall, uh, this investment is not material to the overall financial statements, then certainly uh, the requirements, uh, it is not very, very stringent for you to apply those requirements. But at the same time, cost is not an excuse for not, not applying an IFRS. So uh, there is no exception or exemption available regarding the cost of applying a standard. Uh, but at the same time, if the uh, if, if, the, if, the, if the implication of applying a standard is, are very, very insignificant to the financial statements, so yes, a compromise can be made on the materiality ground. So that is, I think, uh, is, a, is a fundamental concept that you have to consider materiality before applying any accounting policy. 
and if something do not have a material effect on the financial statements, so that can be ignored. My name is Muhammad Aslam and I, I own my uh, practice, small practice. Uh, my question is related to this unquoted skirt. Uh, if unquoted securities of company A are held by three companies like B, C and D, you think the fair value in all those three companies has to be same? No. Uh, because why, why so? <laughs> because, you know, first of all, each company is preparing its own financial statements. It is not necessarily required to look at other companies as to how they are valuing that investment and perhaps it may not have access to that data as well. But a company while preparing the financial statements and a management makes its own judgments and estimate about an investment, about its fair value and how it sees the returns in future from the investment and that estimate and those assumptions should, should uh, drive the fair value. Now, in making the valuation, certainly the standard on fair valuation requires that you incorporate many of the market factors, meaning, for example, if you are uh, valuing the, on a discounted cash flow basis, you need to consider what is the market rate of return on such, such kind of investments. So if you use most of the data which is available from the market, such as market discount rates, uh, market dividend yields, etc., and etc., it may result in same or very, very close valuations between the two entities. But yes, there could be situations if the assumption or estimates used by one entity are different from the assumptions used by other, another entity, there could be a difference. And therefore, assumptions used for valuation purposes are required to be disclosed very elaborately in the financial statements. But there is no binding and there could not be any binding to tie up the valuation of one entity between the entities because it is practically not possible. Because if I have an unquoted investment and I want to release my financial statements, I can't wait for some five entities which are all also holding that investment in their balance sheet. So that cannot happen. So you have to look your own balance sheet. You have to make your own estimates according to the criteria for where valuations which are laid out in the standard. In some situations, your estimates about how you see the investment growing in future may tie up with other companies or other shareholders estimates in other cases it might not and if it's if they no, do not it is extremely uh, it is uh, uh, absolutely acceptable situation no, actually i was uh, i was not saying that people must uh, try to look into what other people thinking are reporting uh, way are but definitely to the users of the financial statements it will cause a lot of problems now, let me give you another <laughs> example on this. For example, in case, of, uh, in case of a loan, a bank loan, if I have made a provision X in my books and another bank with the same loan have make, made a provision Y in that book. So, you know, as far as the accounting standards is concerned, there is no obligation because my estimate is my estimate. It's based on certain uh, assumptions and certain uh, factors which as I see that asset and another person may see it differently. Yes, if there is a material inconsistency between the methodology used by one entity and another entity, this may be an indication that perhaps one entity has missed out something. But if they both are technically correct and only the difference is because I see the cash flows X amount in future and the other person sees the business generating cash flows which are different and both have reasons for doing that. So yes, there can be a difference. But yes, the question will raise that why two shareholders have different expectations from the same entity about the future cash flows. This, uh, you know, this will be very unusual because both the shareholders, if it's the case of an unquoted investment, would have access to the future growth of the entity and all that. So in most cases, the expectations would by and large tie up. But even if they do not, and both the entities have rational for doing the valuation they are doing, so I think it can go ahead. <clears throat>
ارسلان 